Hello, I'm John Shepherd, and in this short video, I'm going to take a look at the hamstrings. And to do this for two reasons. The first is to consider exercises that you can do throughout your training, known as pre training exercises, to significantly reduce the incidences of hamstring strain. And the second reason is a consideration of the hamstrings in particular as a means to improve sprint speed. Lots of research indicates that these muscles are crucial for developing increased speed and power. I'll also talk a little bit about the differences between male and female athletes and why women may need to focus more on these exercises. Sprinting and jumping puts the hamstrings under considerable strain and there's a lot of debate as to the right exercises to do to prevent such strain. Just for some context, most of the research indicates that hamstring strains occur mostly during the swing phase when the leg is extended in front of the body and is being pulled back towards the ground. Now this is when the hamstrings are undergoing what's known as an eccentric muscular lengthening action. Well, that is according to the majority of research, although there is some new research that's trying to forward the view that the hamstring is actually working isometrically during this phase and therefore more isometric conditioning exercises would be beneficial. Regular viewers of this channel will know that I favour a lot of leg cycling drills, either performed as sprint drills or, as you're seeing now, with bands or even with Swiss balls. These exercises develop the eccentric capabilities of the hamstring muscles and, I believe, do protect them. And I can only say that over about 12 years of coaching and utilising these exercises, we've had very few hamstring strains. OK, let's first take a look at the leg cycling eccentric drills that we utilise, and this time with the emphasis being on preconditioning. Throughout the training year, we will do leg cycling drills. As you've seen from stationary positions and also whilst moving and moving quickly, this obviously places the hamstrings under the specific type of strain, or at least closer to the specific type of strain that they'll be under when sprinting. I recommend that you do some of these types of exercises every training session, so in your track workouts and also in your gym workouts too. Doing so will mean that you're continually pre-training and building up the necessary eccentric strength to withstand, hopefully, hamstring strains. Another exercise that I place great value on is Swiss ball hamstring curls. These can be done with double legs and single legs. If you think about it, there's an eccentric action as the feet are being pulled back in towards the body. And that's similar to the swing phase during the running action. So to me, this is a specific exercise developing the specific strength that the hamstring muscles need. That's muscle slack or isometric strength if you're a believer in that theory of the way the hamstrings function when sprinting. We try to do these Swiss ball hamstring exercises at least once throughout the training year and usually in a weights and plyometric session early on in the week. Additionally, we also do exercises that involve resistance, such as these cable pull and lower slowly single leg hamstring curls. This is an exercise that Paul does regularly. Now, you can see that there are limitations with it in that the range of motion is compromised and, if possible, it will be better to do the exercise on a bench or perhaps using a standard hamstring machine. However, the concentric aspect is emphasised by the pull as is the eccentric aspect if he holds and lowers slowly. And this exercise lends itself to the muscle slack 
isometric theory as to how the hamstrings work during sprinting, in that you can pause and hold the weight in position when the foot is lowered. In many ways, this exercise is similar to the Nordic hamstring exercise, which is often touted as being a great exercise for hamstring pre-training and injury avoidance. Now I don't favour the Nordic hamstring exercise, so on screen I've placed some words from one of the top physiotherapists in the country, Stuart Butler, and his view of the exercise. Now because I'm not in favour, it doesn't mean to say that I don't believe it works, it means that I've found other alternatives that I think are perhaps kinder on the muscles, leave them less sore, and also do a very functional job in terms of preventing hamstring strain. As Stuart says, a hip dominant exercise or biased exercise, such as the Romanian deadlift, is also a useful inclusion, and these exercises are being touted more and more as being relevant to combating hamstring strain. Should any of you wish to find out more about the Nordic hamstring exercise in particular and its benefits and sometimes limitations, do check out the references on screen. Of course, other weight training exercises will also strengthen the hamstrings and also the glutes and hips. Concentrating on the lowering phase of various exercises will bring into play the hamstrings and the glutes more than just pushing back concentrically. So these eccentric single leg squats and leg presses are also having a value, I believe, on strengthening the hamstrings against injury, as well as developing increased sprint power potential. Do also bear in mind that developing the hamstrings is crucial for improving sprint speed. Much research indicates that these muscles are important, in particular for women, together with the adductors, in terms of improving the potential to improve max velocity. And of course, that also applies to men. But women's hamstrings and adductors are often proportionally, everything else being equal, not as large and therefore as powerful as their male equivalents. There's plenty of research to indicate that the hamstrings are crucial for sprint performance. Take a look at the quote on screen now. And if you're interested in the free lap timing system, which is extremely portable and accurate to two one thousandths of a second, do drop me a line via my email, johnshepherdfitness at gmail.com. We regularly use the system to test, for example, 20 metre fly times or 40 metre times with a 20 metre split. The system enables you to time multiple athletes as long as you have enough FX chip BLEs, for example. And it's easily set up using your smartphone and it works via Bluetooth. As usual, Good luck with your training and competitions and do leave any comments you may have in the section below or via my other social media.